Last week, we talked about the things you cannot take into the Disney parks. This week, we're talking about the opposite. What can you take into the Disney parks? This is episode 75. I'm Soraya. I'm Aurora. And together, we're just Just your your average Disney Disney travelers. Before we get to our topic, there's more news. Aurora, did you hear? April 18th, um, the characters will be uh, meeting people without social distancing again. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, so uh, people can give hugs and, you know, go up and be with the characters, which I know um, you actually really like how they've been doing the social distancing. Yeah. Um. But is it for all characters, or are they still going to have, like, some characters sometimes be out so where you can only just sort of wave, or... I don't know what they'll end up deciding, or how they'll end up... I was actually wondering the same thing, because I was thinking how... One of the things I like about how they've done the social distancing is how it's easy and quick to go grab a selfie. You don't have to wait in a line. It's, I mean, all you have to wait for is for them to turn your head, their head, you know, and face your direction instead of the person next to you. And so it really um, has been so nice and convenient in that way. I just think it'll be nice, though, for, I just keep thinking of all the little children who these characters are so real for them and their their stories, you know, the stories, their favorite stories that they love. These characters are all part of that and that it'll be fun for them to go and Give them hugs and, you know, all yeah. that. But one of the things that I think would be good to point out, and it's just like we've talked so much about when you have children that might be um, hesitant or shy or nervous around characters, um, the characters really will read the body language and they will go based off of the signals that they're getting from the person that's greeting them. And so if you don't want to give the characters a hug, don't go in for a hug. They're not going to force a hug on you, you know? And yeah. so, um, you can go up to them as close as you feel comfortable. They're not going to encroach upon you. So people can still have space if they prefer that because I know some people do. Um, but yeah, now the option is there at least, and I do hope that they have sometimes at least some characters, like maybe Winnie the Pooh or Alice in Wonderland, you know, those out in the green spaces like we've seen during COVID, um, because that it's fun to just happen upon characters. Yeah. And it's so nice not to have to wait in line for every one of them. Yeah. There's going to be lines for princesses. There's going to be lines for Mickey and Minnie. That's going to always be now that it's back to that kind of situation. But um, but maybe some of the others will see more of like we've been having the last year and a half or so. Yeah. So, anyways, um, that's the news. Um, there might be more news. That's the news that's been on my mind. I was super excited to see that. Um, let's get on to our topic, though. Things that you can take into the Disney parks. Because last week we talked about all of the things. Well, not all of them, but the some of the main things that are banned that maybe you knew about, maybe you didn't. But there's also um, a lot of uh, people who don't know what you can take. I can't tell you how many times people have asked. The first thing on my list here is food and drinks. Some people have, uh, even friends, sometimes I'll hear them talk about it, and they didn't know that they could take food or drink into the parks. They just assumed that they couldn't. And the truth is you can. You can take just about anything um, you want. They don't allow glass containers, and they don't allow alcohol. Um, to be brought in. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, you can take snacks, you can take sandwiches, you can take fruit, you can take water and soda and, you know, just about anything that you want to. And that's a good way to maybe help keep your budget down and also to keep a little bit more control over what your diet is while you're there um, mm-hmm. for those that need to. So um, we often will take some snacks, some trips we do more than others. Um, we used to do it more. Yeah. We don't do it as much as we used to. We used to sometimes take even a, like a sandwich or something in, but, but it's absolutely allowed. They will search your bags. Um, and that's it. They'll search it, make sure that, um, you don't have anything else in, in your little bags. If you have like an insulated carrier or something to carry them in. Um, but yeah, it's allowed. Mm-hmm. What else? Um, you can bring in hydro flasks. 
Um, you can bring in really any kind of water, water bottle. bottles. Yeah. It does not have to be a clear water bottle. So, yeah. Yeah, so... So, so that's been something else um, a lot of people have wondered if it has to be a clear, you know, knowing that you can bring these in, it doesn't have to be in a clear container. You can um, use whatever you have, um, you know, to to transport so long as it doesn't break any of the other rules that we talked about last week. Yeah. Um, along those lines, then, you can bring in a small cooler. The maximum size is 24 inches by 18 inches by 15 inches, which is... A larger cooler than you'd want to necessarily carry around constantly, but it's a decent sized cooler when you think about bringing it in and sticking it in a locker or something. Yeah. Um, we, I, I would really, you, these can be hard coolers, um, but I would actually recommend if you, if it works for your family and your situation, just taking in an insulated, um, one of those insulated bags, um, the soft ones that can then get squished into your backpack when it's empty. <laughs> yeah. Just put your, um, the stuff that needs to be chilled in there. Um, and then along those lines, we didn't put it on the list, but last week we talked about no loose ice, but you can take in, um, like ice packs, like the, uh, blue ice, the lunch ice packs that are cold, cold packs. And you can also put loose, loose ice into a, a Ziploc bag, like a sandwich bag or something, um, to keep things cold, um, but that makes it so that it's no longer loose. It's not just in a big container. Yeah. Um, some people's tips are to do that, and then halfway through the day, after you've eaten your lunch or what, or your snacks or whatever, pouring that um, now melted or melting ice into your your water bottle because it'll be nice and cold. Oh, that would be smart. And then when you're done, then you don't have to worry about, like, trying to squish the bag. If you bring, like, a bag, insulated bag. Yeah. You don't have to worry about having the ice in it. Yep. As well. Yep. So, some people actually, yeah, they do that intentionally. So, they'll have cold ice in the, or cold drinks in the middle of the day. All right. What's next? Um, you can bring backpacks, diaper bags, like, other things like that. Something that's small-ish, but still can carry a lot of stuff. Um, bags do not need to be clear, and you cannot have bags that are, are pulled, so basically no wheels. Yeah, no luggage, <laughs> things like that. But, um, yeah, so same with the the water bottles, they don't have to be clear. Yeah. Um, I don't, I know that that's kind of a trend right now, like when you go to sporting events or concerts or places like that, um, you do have to sometimes have those clear bags, but... I mean, you can. You can take a clear bag if you want. It's just not It's not required. Yeah. Um, something you can take into the park, and we recommend it if you like to use it and chew it, is gum. Because they do not sell gum in the park. So you cannot buy gum in a Disney park, but you can bring your own gum. And the reason why they don't sell gum is uh, Walt Disney didn't want to ever sell gum. He didn't want uh, people to you know, have the gun just spit out on the ground. And that's another reason why there's garbage cans so frequently throughout the parks is because he really didn't want people to have an easy excuse or, or just get lazy and drop their garbage or spit their gum out. Um, but he's, he just really was adamant about the gum. And so yeah. they don't sell gum and they, they never have. And I doubt they ever will. So if you want to chew gum, which I do a lot, especially after a meal to kind of feel like I clean my teeth, <laughs> um, <laughs> You just bring some. Bring your own. Yep. You can actually bring tripods as long as they're less than 16 feet tall. Not 16'6. Six. Sorry, 6. <laughs> that I... would be so tall. <laughs> as long as they're less than 6 feet tall when they're fully extended, right? Yeah, and you know, we, we did talk about this again last week because yeah. anything too large, larger than that, yeah, is, is not allowed. But so what I see a lot of are, uh, what are they called? Um, the, they, like you can, they're bendable and you can wrap them around oh. poles and things like that. Um, anyways, yeah. I, anyways, yeah. So, so you can take small tripods and other types of things, including gimbals, which are camera stabilizers, which that might be what I'm talking about. Honestly, I don't even know what that is. But I hear people talk about it a lot when they talk about what's allowed and not allowed. And gimbals are allowed if you have one. Um, 
I, but I, like I said, those are a stabilizer. I've never brought one. I don't know how many people bring these things in, tripods and stabilizers and stuff. But I think that if people are wanting to get photos of like the fireworks and, and things like that yeah. to get a really good professional shot, you have to have something like that. And so um, you can do it. Just make sure you're not having your tripods too big. Mm -hmm. What's another thing you can bring into Disney? This is my favorite. It's probably, yeah, and probably one of the most biggest ones. Yeah. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> Please bring your patience. Yes. No, and and especially <laughs> if you have little children, or yeah. just actually just if well actually if you're going with anyone, because that will well and it doesn't even matter if you're bringing children or not because there are going to be children around you at yeah. Disney. It's you're you're never going to go to Disney and not have children there. They may not be yours, but they will be in lines and they will be on rides and they will be at shows and they'll be on the streets and everything. And so bring your patience, but it's not the children that I find I need the most patience with. I get so frustrated when I see guests that are adults that are just acting in ways that are, I don't know, I just, either they're trying to start a problem to get something for free, or they're just giving a cast member a really hard time because they're hot and tired and got frustrated about something, but now they're taking it out on the cast member and the people around them, and Oh my goodness, that's when I have a hard time keeping my patience. Yeah. Um, when it's the adults that are causing problems. But whether it's children or adults or teens, <laughs> as I say with a teen next to me. Um, yeah, bring your patience. <laughs> You'll need it. You'll use oh, it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, we wanted to remind you, too, that uh, whatever you do bring into the parks, you're going to be carrying around, mostly. Um, so be smart about it. We've talked a bit about what to pack, what not to pack, and um, we talked even last week on the episode before this about, um, like, w people who pack too much and people who don't pack oh, anything. Yeah. So just keep in mind, whatever you're going to pack you, or take, you're going to be carrying around and decide if it's something you really need or not. But there is um, another option. There are lockers located in each of the parks as well as in the Esplanade that's between the two Disneyland parks. Um, the lockers are all day access for one fee, so it's not like you pay every time you go to open it. Um, the prices will vary based on the size of the locker, but they vary on um, price from $7 to $15 per locker per day. At least that was the most uh, recent check I did on the cost of them. And um, some of the larger ones are pretty, pretty big. They will fit a, a good size cooler in there, so... Um, and the largest lockers are the ones that are going to be outside of the parks that are between the um, in the Esplanade, between the two parks. They're located, if you're looking at Disneyland Park, all the way to the left. They're kind of tucked away, and it's not easy to see unless you're really looking for them. But there's lockers and um, a little green space, and I think there's some trees around there or shrubs or something to kind of, sh kind of partition it off so it's a little bit more secluded. But I think there's um, uh, picnic benches there. Oh. Or tables. So you can go ahead and have your lunch there if you um, are planning to do that. But in any case, um, whether it's, you know, a blanket or a jacket or, um, you know, anything that you just don't want to carry around. Maybe you did bring a tripod or something, but you don't want to carry it the whole day. Lockers are an option. Yeah. It's definitely. All right. So of the list of things you can bring... Um, and some of these things that we're going to recommend maybe weren't even on our list, but um, these are the things that we recommend bringing in to the parks, um, if you are interested. Yeah, so first thing is water bottles or a hydration pack. Yes. Some, some you way. Just, you definitely need to drink a lot of water. Yeah, some way to have water, whether it's a small bottle and then you get it refilled frequently, or you want to carry around a larger bottle, it doesn't matter. Whatever works for you, make sure you're drinking water, and so we highly recommend that. That's something that we actually, I don't know that I've really ever gone in without even a water, like a, even a small water bottle. I've, I've always had something um, just because water is so important. You're out in the sun, you're on your feet, you know, it's just, it can, it, it's important to stay hydrated. Yes. So along those lines too, something I would recommend if you're a person that really doesn't like the taste of water, and to be honest, if you're in Florida especially, but even in some of the California locations, water doesn't always taste great because it's not always 
well, treated the same as other areas. And so if you don't like the taste of the water, bring little packets of like crystal light or, um, oh my goodness, my mind just went blank of the kind of the, the drops that dad likes to put in oh, his. Oh yeah, that's like, there's me. Yeah. I don't remember. It's like three liters. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway Mio, 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 Mio. <laughs> Some like, sort of water flavoring yeah, you can like bring. There's also, I think, another one that we've gotten that was like soda flavored. It was yeah. interesting. Yeah. So whatever flavorings you like, um, we don't usually need to do that. Yeah. But if you are the type of person that does not like the taste of water, even if you're getting, getting it filtered from the quick service counters or whatever, um, you don't like it, then flavor it. But don't, I would just highly recommend drinking water, not soda. Um, either that or sports drinks. Sports drinks are okay because you're out there in the sun, you're sweating, and so um, that's that's fine. But anyways, that was a re- that was our recommendation. Okay, what's another yeah. recommendation? Um, reusable straws. Yeah, and to be honest, we don't really do this ourselves. But um, if you don't like paper straws, they that's pretty much what they do at most of the parks now, um, and they. To start to disintegrate after you've been drinking after, I don't know, 15, yeah. 20 minutes. So if you're planning on doing drinks where you're going to need straws, I'd recommend doing that. We really stick with water most of the time. We really yeah. don't get a whole lot of drinks other than that. And so we haven't had a problem with this personally. But if you are going to be getting drinks, I mean, I will say, we do keep getting that drink over at Ronto's Roasters. The, oh, um, that? the that Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, I had to remember where it was. It was like the berry Yes. Thing. It's, that one I'm sure we'll keep getting. So anyways, so good. straws, reusable straws um, are a very good item um, to, to consider bringing. Yes. Um, also, good, a good size porta- uh, portable phone charger, those, phone, those power banks, a good size one. Not those tiny little itty bitty things because they're not going to last you the whole day. Especially if you have multiple people in your group that are going to ch- want to charge. Um, I have an Anchor power bank that I really like. Um, but go, you can do some research. Find what's right for you. Um, I would plan to get something that's going to be able to charge, do a complete charge at least a couple of times. I think mine can do like probably up to four in a day. Um, between so that between the three of us, we're all able to get charged. Um, but you definitely need that. I find that my phone, you know, after you've had a phone for a year or two, it starts to lose its ability, I guess, to oh, yeah, maintain it a starts, charge. It starts losing its battery fast. But even, and that's before you get to Disney. Then you get to Disney, even at Disney uh, with a brand new phone, you're going to need to recharge because you just use it so much. And now more than ever, with Disney Genie, Disney Genie Plus, um, all of that, you really are on your phone so much more. Um, we even use our phones now instead of having paper fast passes or lightning lane passes. You know, you just use it for so much, not just taking photos, but even just checking to see wait times or getting yourself um, a mobile order for, for lunch or something. And so yeah. just bring a power charger um and don't forget the cables. I did that oh. one time. One time. Oh, yes. One time. It was just one day. It wasn't like the whole trip. Oh, okay. but just one day I had forgotten the cable. And I, yeah, that was just crazy. So make sure you have the cable because your, your, your cord. Because if you don't bring your cord, you won't be able to use that power bank. Yeah. Um, if there is going to be rain, bring an umbrella. Yeah, that's a recommendation over... Like ponchos. ponchos. Ponchos are convenient as far as space saving. Like when it's, it's, you don't have to, it's light and easy to carry around. Um, if you get those cheap disposable ones, but they're also really like they, they get humid inside and then they get all hot and sticky. And yeah. It's really uncomfortable. So we bring, you know, you can get umbrellas that are like compact that they like really kind of fold down real small. And so I bring that. But I still only bring it on the days that I'm pretty confident that there's going to be rain. We don't mind light rain. Yeah. I don't. I don't use an umbrella unless it's really raining, and so um, yeah. But I prefer the umbrella over ponchos. Yes. All right. Another thing um, you might not think about: bring Ziploc bags, and this could be for multiple reasons. Um, it could be that the Ziploc bag will help to put a snack away that you haven't finished. You know, maybe you're only eating half your churro. 
instead of sharing it with your daughter or your mother. What? Why would you? <laughs> I'm teasing. So anyways, that, this was just an example that would never happen for me because we eat the churro <laughs> all the way. But anyways, you know, if you have a kid that maybe got a big lollipop and they there's no way they're going to finish it, you know. Anyways, Ziplocs yeah. help there. But also Ziplocs will help if your phone is um, not waterproof, which I think more and more these days the newer phones can get wet easier now. But if you have a phone that shouldn't be getting wet or any other equipment that shouldn't be getting wet, you can stick them in Ziploc bags before going on Splash Mountain or even Pirates, for sure, Grizzly River Run, you know, any of those things. So Ziploc bags, they don't take very much space. They don't, they're not heavy. Just stick them in your bag. And then if you need them, you have them. Yep. And last. Hand sanitizer. This is kind of like, I don't know if anyone doesn't do that nowadays now with all of COVID I think every even people who didn't used to probably do now um and it's not even as required or necessary to bring your own since they have them at every single attraction yeah um and store and (laughs) everything um but I'm wondering as things chill that chill out a little bit more with COVID as it becomes um a little bit more back to quote unquote normal um how many of those are going to stay? So I still would say bring a hand sanitizer um, just in case. But yeah. Um, but yeah, there's always been germs. We're just more aware of them now than we have been in the past, I think, as a, as a whole. Um, but anyways, yeah, so those are the things we would recommend that you bring in that you might not think of. Um, and the that's the list of things that might have surprised you or you weren't aware of that you were questioning, weren't sure about. Um, that do make the list. You can bring them into the parks. It might make your day a whole lot easier. Um, You may choose and decide that you don't need to bring some or all of them, but now you know. Yep. Anything else we need to say? I don't think so. Okay. Well, then that's it for us this week. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you next week. See you.